reacting to p valley on stars welcome back beautiful listeners to the post hustle pod the patreon exclusive show you could view it as pro Kata hustle after dark okay i don't think that's gonna catch on anywho my boyfriend and i love the show p valley it's probably the most popular series on the streaming network stars stars is not kid friendly there are a lot of programs that have to do with stripping i don't know if they focus on other forms of sex work but i love their documentaries and original tv series i say that as someone who has only seen two original tv series on stars i am not paid to say any of this p valley is an adaptation of the 2015 play pussy valley written by writer and director katori hall p valley follows the lives of several black strippers and their families in a fictional town in mississippi the united states as i say this there are about two episodes left in season two to premiere. The second season takes place in 2020 and shows how all the characters survive under COVID. The show has been praised for well portraying the Black South, strippers, non-binary people, gay people, the coronavirus pandemic, colorism, domestic violence, poverty, root work, misogyny and whorephobia within baptism, the religion, child custody battles, police brutality, the American prison system, abortion, teen pregnancy, and and more. If you don't want to hear spoilers, subscribe to Stars, watch all the episodes, and come back. Well, spoilers ahead, what are your first impressions? I could have totally binged that the first day. That's how good it was. I don't know how often you binged entire seasons of TV shows before you met me, but I think after I moved in with you, we binged a decent amount of TV shows all in one day. The only TV show that I can think that I've binged was Breaking Bad, and I think I finished it in three days. How many seasons? I I've never seen it. I believe there are seven. I know I started watching it when the final season was out. I caught up in three days. And each episode is an hour long and there are about, I think, 10 episodes per season. I didn't sleep that much in those three days. Well, I don't know how long ago that was. I was in undergrad. Listeners do not know the time period between you being an undergrad, which spanned several years, and you meeting me. That's true. It was about four or five years ago, possibly. I know that even when you do have a job, you are willing to sacrifice food cleaning and sleep just to do whatever the fuck you want to do <laughs> has nothing been that interesting since we discovered severance and i introduced p valley to you yeah i think the only other tv show that i actually was heavily invested in the storyline was severance it's really good yeah and but we're not gonna spoil severance are we no no. Well, I mean, we could do another podcast where we can spoil Severance. I don't know. P-Valley seems... What we're actually talking about. Yeah. Also slightly on brand, considering you're a stripper. I think one thing I found a little hard to believe is the fact that it always looked like the club was packed every single yeah. day. And I feel like that's not... Uh, what's Realistic. The Realistic. Yes. That is true, but also if they just showed the slow hours at work, it would not be entertaining enough to leave in the final cut. Yeah. And it was actually, I was thinking of something similar. Uh, they had the, the sex scene between the, the godson, the lawyer. Dude. Oh, I did not like that. No one likes that. What, the sex scene? Oh, wait, are we talking about Britney? Uh, yeah, between Britney and her. No one liked that. Oh, <laughs> no. No one liked that. Something that was going through my head was, dang, that was kind of quick. And then I was like thinking, everybody thought that. <laughs> No, but then I was like thinking, I mean, clearly it has to be quick. Be, I mean, because it'd just be 30 minutes of humping. Um, Nobody wants to see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Saying it lasts like 10 seconds isn't unrealistic in like real life situations. Sorry, this is a really weird tangent, but that was... This is... I, I don't know if you wanted to hear a spoiler uh, review of P-Valley, but there is, I, I can assure you, way more to the story than this like five minute, not maybe not even five minute in season one yeah i don't know why i was so fixated on that i was like dang <laughs> guys watching him must be like oh man see 10 seconds they even do it in the movies and i'm like yeah because it would be unrealistic to put 30 minutes of humping in an episode it's not like actual porn can we actually talk about the plot in the grand scheme of things let's talk about the grand scheme of things mm -hmm. <laughs> you're making a face one thing that i really liked about it 
And I think this is part of the reason why it kept my interest because they introduced like seven different character story themes uh, slash characters to follow throughout the the season. I don't know if this movie was the first to do it. It probably wasn't. But I remember watching a movie as a kid called Babel. And it was essentially, you follow, I think, four different people's lives who seem they should be disconnected. But in reality, you find out at the end of the movie that actually all their lives were intertwined and they didn't know it. And so with P-Valley, you were following like seven different character stories. And I feel like that kind of kept my attention because I would always have to think. When they introduced seven different stories, I think I was more invested in the series because I had to figure out, okay, where are they in this timeline? You had um, Uncle Clifford and Lil Murder, which I love. Oh my god. My favorite story arc. Um... <laughs> I, I understand the end, like the way Low Murder was acting, and it sucks, but they're still my favorite story arc in this series. Uh, you had Haley and kind of getting into a little bit of her mysterious Embezzled. background story. Yeah, that, you know, they teased that in the very beginning, but was slowly giving us information, which was almost boring, in, in my opinion, her story. Uh, Mercedes and her mom and her daughters and all that issue behind that. And then you had Mississippi. How how she was being clearly abused. Her coworkers were seeing it, but like kind of stepping down and letting her do her own thing because, I mean, in the end, you really can't tell someone, hey, you need to stop that. Ultimately, it's up to them to make the decision, right? I don't know if that's like a naive way to think about abuse, but they definitely talked about very heavy themes in this series. I know what you're talking about. I've seen friends go through that shit. I guess all you can really do is be there for them when they need it, uh, which I think most of the cast was doing which was very nice oh also the little mini arc of uh dj never scared it's just a high schooler djing at a strip club which i thought I'm, was I, I hope he was at least a freshman in college i don't think so he was you really thought he was a senior in high school i've <laughs> some level in high school i don't know if he was a senior but <laughs> uh definitely did not seem like an adult this is my second time ever watching p valley and when i watched it first i was doing it like one episode a day or like a few episodes a week did not watch back to back and the second time around i noticed a bunch of stuff that i did not remember the first time when i watched p valley for the first time i did not know any backstory for diamond but then the second time i watched i was like oh were you talking about his military background yeah I mean, that, that kind of made sense, I guess, the way he held himself at the club as a bouncer. But also, they mentioned, what, what did they say in the last episode? Fake ass Drake? Oh my god. I thought it was just me. Homie looked like Drake the very first episode I saw him. There's no way they got Drake. This guy looks exactly like him, though. You don't even know what your favorite celebrities look like. I remembered that Gidget's boyfriend was a drug dealer because a, a lot of sex workers are dating drug dealers. I forgot that the accountant slash cook slash door guy at the pink was also helping out Gidget's boyfriend with drug dealing? F uh, well, no, because like, wasn't it at first Uncle Clifford was holding it as a favor, but then when Big Al learned about the pink and its foreclosure, he decided to get with, what's her name, Widget? Bidget? <laughs> Gidget. Uh, <laughs> Decided to reach out to Gidget's boyfriend and have like a secured income by offering to hold his stash for him. Kind of like insurance for him losing his job at the pink. I, wasn't that the story? Because he didn't just like say, hey, I also want to deal drugs at this club, right? I mean, they all got felonies. There's not that many jobs he can take. Oh, I didn't realize he had felonies. I don't know if Diamond has felonies. He probably has felonies now. But I'm pretty sure at some point... Clifford said Big L has felonies. That's why nobody hires him. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense. Dang, you mentioned someone and I wanted to talk about how not followable they were. Yeah, Bidget's story... <laughs> Gidget's storyline was hard to follow, mostly because she was rarely talked about. I think she was maybe, like, her story was maybe mentioned in one or two episodes. What else did I find interesting? She's not too vital. Like, she did want to bail out Mercedes, but she couldn't afford it. 
Yeah. But she did bring it to uh, everyone together. That was nice, even though they didn't really do anything, but except for Haley. So one thing I liked about P-Valley was that the show set a good example of how strip club staff and customers should be. Are you talking specifically dancers or are you talking about like administrative staff? So like the bouncers, the DJ, the... Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. I thought the manager treated the girls great. I thought the oh, DJ yeah. treated them great. The bouncer treated them great the accountant slash door guy slash cook <laughs> treated them great the bartenders even were like let me tell you which customers ordered the most expensive drinks and i'm going to give you water when you've had too much alcohol yeah. even even the stylist in the locker room was really nice yeah 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 when customers did not want to talk to a particular stripper they would hand her money before actually talking to the one they're interested in and if they want to leave the vip room early they would just hand the rest of the money or some tips to the dancer and then leave i wish that always happened oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i i noticed that and i would not have thought that that was customary unless you had told me if i was to watch this on my own without actually ever have met you and not knowing anything about strip club etiquette i would not have known like oh you gotta give them money as like a tip for coming up and talking to you i would like to say i think mercedes from p valley and noha from much loved are extremely similar because they're both sex working mamas who would like to spend more time with their kids but but because extended family, they're not allowed to. And it sucks because they're queen boss bitch babes. Oh, is that it? Let's talk about our predictions. <laughs> you want to say it? Season 2, episode 1. Yes, thank you, hun. No worries. Uh, so... Wait, have you seen any of the trailers? Because I feel like I've seen every single trailer that exists. I've seen zero trailers. Okay, so what do you think? My prediction was, I actually think that Mississippi's plan was that she was going to kill her boy boyfriend that night but it just so happened that fake drake decided to beat the shit out of well i guess he didn't really beat the shit out of the boyfriend they like got into a fight they both got pretty wrecked she pulled out the gun on him but i had a feeling that she was going to kill him that night mostly because that same episode they emphasized midnight something did it Autumn. Autumn. Oh my God. Um, they emphasized in that episode that her gun was no longer in her locker because she tried grabbing it. That may have been Mercedes that tried to grab it, but one of them tried to grab it in her locker and it wasn't there. At the end, you find out that Mississippi was the one that had it. And in my mind, I was thinking, oh shit, she was going to plan to kill her boyfriend that night, but fake Drake fucked it up. If you, I oh. never thought of that. Not my first viewing of P-Valley, not my second second viewing so i think that is very profound yeah that's something that i was thinking about the trailers did give away a few details which i think will be extremely big in season two like what do you think is going to happen between andre and his wife andre's wife is going to work at the pink are you serious no no no, no. Uh, I mean, Andre's wife is probably going to find out about what happened, mostly because I feel like Andre is a little bit of a... Loose lips sink ships? No, I just feel like he's a little, not even like a bitch, but like low-key abuser. I feel like he can't not stay away from Autumn, regardless of if Autumn is going messaging him or whatnot. Uh, he can't stay away because he either hates his marriage or he just doesn't want to, or just like cheating on people the trailers that i saw did not reveal i feel like any big plot points with the new dancers they just show you oh yay there's new blood here's what they look like okay it is hinted that gidget is not going to be in this season i'm going to assume another side character maybe toy i don't know peanut butter the other lesser known dancers are not going to be working at the pink anymore this gidget is the uh the white chick right yes well to be fair her i mean they didn't really reveal much in her backstory except that she lives in a trailer park I don't know if this person was... I don't know if the person who said this was just being a dickhead, but her mom might be a drug abuser. Her boyfriend deals drugs. Actually, no. I think I don't think they were actually being mean because I remember the boyfriend said that you can't bring drugs home because of your mom or something. And she was like, oh, it's for me or something. I don't know. So maybe, maybe her mom does have like a drug problem. I mean, Big L was kind of tied into that plot. Do you think they're just going to drop it and just have Big L be a background 
character. I don't think they're going to drop Big L. I don't think he'll continue the drug thing if he does continue to work at the pink. But if he does continue the drug thing, then I think he'll be no longer working at the pink, but still play some role in the series. Mm -hmm. You want to start watching? Yes. And transition! This is me and my very, very, very sexy boyfriend talking about what we think of season two so far of Pussy Valley. I would like to start this with how the original Pussy Valley play ended, and it's very bleak. I am not going to read the entire play. Yeah, I, I am going to talk about some triggering stuff. Spoiler alert. Fucking, you didn't spoiler alert me. Now I'm gonna get spoiled. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Here is how the original, I think, 2015 play ended. Lil Murda rapes Uncle Clifford. Mercedes has a father who's a pastor. Mercedes is threatened by her father to give him money to finance a church. Money that she made through dancing. After Uncle Clifford gets raped, he depressingly pole dances at the club and then just lies on the floor. Mercedes and Mississippi stop working at the pink. Mississippi decides to become a porn star and her co-workers at The Pink say pole dancing is art, pornography is not. That's basically how the original play ends. I'm trying to not remember any of this so that way when I watch the series I'm not gonna be spoiled. They definitely made some changes when adapting it for TV. Yeah. Well, for the the dad, Mercedes' dad, that sounds exactly what Mercedes' mom is doing. Okay, let's actually talk about the TV show. What do we think about the TV show so far? I know a lot of people are complaining that there's not enough scenes at the pink because season one, most of season one was filmed at the pink. A huge complaint about season two is that they're not doing a lot of filming at the pink. Okay, I mean, it's supposed to take place during COVID. I think this was like right, it was, t it's taking place right when the lockdown started, right? So even though mississippi is like fairly conservative i think they're they had shut down mostly everything so i'm not surprised that they're not doing too much filming in the pink this is all leading up to the grand re 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 opening <laughs> Yes. I would argue that the scenes that are filmed outside of the club only enhance the show. The people who really like watching the club scenes are going to be ever more grateful once they do start showing scenes of the re 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 re, re reopening. Another complaint that people have is the Haley and Andre plot and I feel like in the most recent episode we watched, Haley reveals a little bit about her childhood. Barely anything and I felt like they could have done more with that scene. She said something along the lines of she did not know who her parents were and so she was counting down the days until her 18th birthday so she could finally figure out what their names were. So, so I think they were heavily hinting that she was in the foster care system and maybe she was adopted. Haley was adopted? Isn't that what it sounds like? If she was like, I was not allowed to know the names of my parents until I was 18. That sounds to me like she was given up for an adoption adoption center or foster care. I don't remember her saying that. Well, she did not know who her biological parents were. I don't remember any of this, but even so, I mean, she may have grown up with her grandparents or aunts or uncles. I don't know, some other family member, but I, I don't know. I'm also in the camp that the Andre Haley storyline is not that engaging. So fucking boring. It oh is. my God. I want to fucking claw my eyes out whenever I see <laughs> them on the screen. Oh my God. And they're just not interesting anymore. Haley's not interesting anymore. The fucking the guy what's his name andre andre fake obama isn't interesting anymore <laughs> yeah they're just not cry every time i see them on screen not because i think they're amazing but i think it's because i'm wasting five minutes of my life that is what a lot of people are also saying about the quote-unquote romance between big bone and diamond i'm not buying it uh <laughs> I know that's his girlfriend in real life, but I don't think she's that good at acting. Oh, Loki, I kind of enjoy it. The actor for <laughs> Diamond is actually good, but no, why I, are you enjoying it? I, I like it. It's so funny because she's like, it's, it's funny because Diamond was supposed to be like so stoic in the first season, but then in the second season, he's just like straight up making out with her while she's on her job and Uncle Clifford is visibly annoyed. It's so fucking funny. I don't know. I just, I, I enjoy it. I think it's because there are scenes with Clifford. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Uncle Clifford 
Vancouver does carry the show. Yeah, absolutely does. They're they're definitely not as like they're not making me feel as much brain trauma as Haley and what's his name, but fake Obama. Fake Obama. They're actually quite fun to watch on screen. Okay, let's talk about the romance between Murda and and Uncle Clifford. That was interesting. Wait, I want to interject. I don't really hear complaints about their romance. The only complaint I can really recall from season two is people not liking the dirty talk that Murda says when he has sex. Whereas I I think it's fine. (laughs) So I have no problem. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, that... (laughs) That is like, his story arc is, Little Murder's story arc is the most, what's that thing called? It's like a roller coaster. No, 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 no. What's that thing called where they're like, oh, it's the biggest fucking plot twist I've ever seen. I was not expecting that at all. I remember, and I think it was the first episode, I was like, dude, is this guy gonna like beat up people here because he just doesn't like people here? Like, he's got like some sort of attitude. The next episode is making chicken wings for everyone at the club, or I don't know if it was the next episode, but it was like the next couple scenes. I was like, what the fuck? And then... (laughs) It's so great because it's so fucking wholesome and it's so cool because his entire story is like always changing. I had no idea him and Teak were were like ever going to be a thing. I don't know why. Well, Teak didn't give off vibes. I only know Lil Murder because of previous thing, but I also didn't get vibes from Lil Murder. I have to say I'm pretty proud of my gaydar. That one, I was just like, what the fuck? It's kind of sad, the whole thing. I don't have any complaints about Teak and Lil Murder except for that one time when Teak put a condom on Murda using his mouth and I'm pretty sure every single sexologist watching that was like no 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 do not put that on your mouth because you can create holes in the condom with your uh, teeth. True. But that is literally my only complaint. It's very nitpicky. I don't really keep up with the cast on social media. Shannon Thornton is the actress for Keyshawn and she said that a lot of viewers of the show have messaged her saying that they could relate to her character. Who's Keyshawn? Mississippi. Oh. A lot of people have messaged her saying that they felt like the show well portrayed victims of domestic violence. Yeah, I think so. Uh, the whole manipulating, like, he'll hurt her and then he'll hurt himself to emotionally manipulate her. I, th- I think that's fairly accurate portrayal. And then it seems like she is, like, reminiscing about the good times they had together while at the same time, like, struggling to go out in public because of all the bruises she's getting from him. I just read an unpopular popular opinion, but someone on Reddit just said, Haley is running the club better than Uncle Clifford. No, that's, no, she is not. First of all, I feel like part of the appeal with Uncle Clifford is that Uncle Clifford garnered respect from the workers. I feel like Haley isn't getting quite as much of that. They're arguing a lot and people, Mercedes coming back and they're like, do they do this, do they do this a lot? And then everyone's like, yeah. And then it's just like not a, the vibe isn't, isn't there anymore. So I'm going to read some of the things that people are saying. They're saying she's a good owner because she recognized that the dancers needed to make money throughout Rona and so she opened up the drive through and that may have been Uncle Clifford's idea, but she footed the bill. Uncle Clifford was in tens of thousands of debt and the pink was about to go on the auction block and she saved the pink from being auctioned off. She recognized the need for new dancers and the audience seems to really like whisper in roulette. She noticed that Mercedes was unable to headline the re 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 reopening. <laughs> Sorry. Headline the reopening and so she got Mississippi back and well people are saying that they can't imagine any other scenario where Mississippi would be rehired at the pink. I don't know if that sways your opinion on anything. It doesn't because she's doing all of this shit just to get her 10 million dollars. She doesn't actually care like future long-term goals. These are all short-term solutions. Also didn't the whole like foreclosure thing get sped up dramatically? because of casino wanting to open. I don't think that shows that Uncle Clifford's a bad business person. I I think that it just shows how greedy that fucking casino place is. And I definitely don't think it shows how good a businesswoman what's-her-face is, Haley? No, no. Haley doesn't give a shit about those dancers. Uncle Clifford does. And Haley definitely doesn't give a shit about the pink. Uncle Clifford does. But I definitely do think 
that Uncle Clifford definitely deserves a big portion of that $10 million. I agree. I am not a lawyer, but she's using a fake name, not a legal name. In fact, her actual identity is recognized as dead. <laughs> she's, according to the government, she's dead. And as if impersonating someone else wasn't already bad enough, but people have been saying, okay, let's just say she does get her offer. If you use a fake name on a legal document, like a check, it's gonna get voided. People are saying, how, how the fuck does Haley think that's gonna work out? I think they can, they can get it to work. I'm actually surprised that the people trying to buy that property haven't thought of that, because that could definitely be used against her. They don't know that Lakeisha Savage isn't her real name. Huh. Interesting. I guess maybe she'll... I don't know, she was able to, like, fucking steal 250 grand or something from that dead dude. Uh, that guy who was alive, but then she killed. Yeah, but... Uh, uh, so I definitely feel like they, she has a way of swiping the 10 mil. She might, like, have it go all to Uncle Clifford and then have Uncle Clifford transfer it. That's smart. Anyways, okay, let's just say you're a voter in Chukalisa. Who would you vote to be mayor? I think it's Wayne Kyle, Andre Watkins, or Patrice Woodbine. Who are you voting for? I'd vote for Patrice Woodbine. Only because she said, I, what'd she say? I, I hoped, hoped so, so you, you could, could fly. fly. <laughs> yes. I would not be happy with the choices, but if those are literally the only people I could vote for, I'm going for Patrice. People are saying that to salvage the Watkins character, if he remains a main character. People are saying that maybe he could have some scenes with Patrice to make him more interesting. I mean, didn't he have a scene with her recently? I can't think of any scenes really with Andre and Patrice Woodbine. Oh, Andre Watkins. Okay, I was I was thinking the white, well, I guess the half white, half black guy. Um, I don't recall any scenes between those two either. No, yeah, they just had one. It was one where he gave her like 10 grand or something. Oh yeah, not many words were exchanged. And didn't he, would I like to see him more. I don't give a fuck about Andre. A lot of people are saying they don't give a fuck about Terika and they wish she would just early admissions college so they don't have to see her. Oh, I really like that storyline with Terika and, and Mercedes. I, I like that Mercedes took her to get a uh, We no need to get rid of Shell. Yeah. Like, Terika's a child so I can understand her being immature but Shell is a grown ass woman even older than Mercedes. I don't know how the fuck she was able to like she got freaky during peak COVID when no one was going anywhere that's mercedes or shell shell no not shell um what's her name terica terica yeah yeah i guess i wasn't a teenager during covid so i guess i don't know if people you snuck guy. out of course people snuck out and fucked i don't i don't know i just stayed in because he was already getting pussy uh, sure no i like terica like I said, like, I don't think there's anyone in that series right now that I care less about than Haley and Andre. <laughs> Since Corbin and Uncle Clifford have a lot of one-on-one -on -one scenes, they make it very, very clear that Corbin is the result of his father fucking the housemaid. So he's a bastard child. Some people have speculated. Uncle Clifford never, or at least I don't think, Clifford ever said what her mom did for a living when she was still alive. But people are speculating, wait, these these two grew up together, it seems. What if Clifford's mom was the housekeeper of the Kyle residence? You know, the Kyle estate. Oh, like they're related? Mm -hmm. I mean, that wouldn't really do anything. Clifford is not the guy's son, the, the dead dad. This does nothing. Except for like maybe build future rapport with Uncle Clifford and Corbin. I think if your mother had a bastard child, you would be like, oh, I want to grow up with this person and be best friends with them in adulthood. Honestly, that does not sound like you. Does it? Wait, so Again? Let's just say at some point your mom had been impregnated by an employer and gave birth to a kid, a bastard. You would want to have a close relationship with that person? Yeah. Oh, maybe I'm just an asshole. That's still my parents' kid. I think if my mother had a child with someone who was as wealthy as, I guess, Wayne Kyle Sr., I think I would be resentful because his legitimate kids are gonna get a lot of that generational wealth and when he passes, I think even the bastard child would get a decent amount of money, but me? Fuck me. Like, I'm not related by blood or by marriage. I don't know. Am I an asshole? No, I don't know. 
fuck. Just because they're ha my half brother, half sister, I, w I would still want to have some contact with them. Okay, I do not want to minimize the experiences of biracial people, especially biracial bastard kids. But almost every single time Corbin is talking to Clifford, he complains about how difficult it is to be half black. And then Uncle Clifford just looks at him like, really? Barely anyone notices you're black. That's okay. I... Does he not often mope about? That. I high key resonate with that though because fucking Lakeisha Savage looks more black than him. No. Okay, so this is this is what happens when you're like mixed. Um, I'm not mixed with white. Yeah, depending on what cultural situation you're in, you're either all of one thing or all of the other thing. You're never like half half. You're always going to be discriminated against that. So you're. It feels like you're almost never welcomed. So when I was in Guam, I was always considered white, even though I was still Chamorro Filipino. I was still considered white because I looked white. But whenever I moved to the states, I wasn't white. I was some. Are you talking about Florida? No, I'm talking about here too, in California. I was some unknown mixed race. A black girl called me exotic, which I think is kind of interesting. But that just tells you, like, it's hard when you're mixed, especially to those two extremes, because in society, I guess you have a hard time fitting into any one category because you're so never... So you feel accepted. sorry for Corbin? I'm not saying I feel sorry for Corbin. I don't pity him whatsoever. I understand what he's saying. I think a lot of mixed people who are mixed with white speak over the mixed people who don't have any white in them. It's kind of like how people think that all interracial relationships include a white person, but that's definitely not true. Yes, I agree. But if I was mixed Chamorro Filipino in Guam, I wouldn't have gotten a much as much flack as being mixed white with Chamorro Filipino. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like the having two extremes, I think, is the is the tipping point of where that issue arises. I want to move on to another topic. Okay, let's talk about roulette. I, I feel like roulette did nothing wrong. Who's roulette? The game uh, Russian roulette. But why do you say you feel like roulette did nothing wrong? Is that the name of that girl? The girl's name is roulette? Yes, her name is roulette. Oh, that's why she was doing doing Russian roulette. <laughs> it took you a while. Oh, okay. I know a lot of people are really rooting for Mississippi and Diamond, but honestly, I'm just rooting for Roulette and Duffy. Duffy is the drug dealer, right? Yes. Oh my god, I love them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You have nothing to say about Roulette? No. That was very anticlimactic. Did you get the Cinderella metaphor in the most recent episode? Derek got her lubes, or Louboutins, whatever you like to call them, bloody shoes. <laughs> they didn't fit. <laughs> The shoe does not fit. Why are you laughing? I was not expecting you to laugh. I thought, what a fucking... Oh my god. He's so fucking cringe. He's like, oh, I beat the shit out of her bum by Louboutins because I'm fucking... Oh my god. Oh, so cringe. Oh my god. After two pregnancies, is it really that difficult to notice your significant other's body changing? Also, she has fucking shoes. Look at her shoes just in case you're fucking... Fucking, I'd look at your shoes if I was like, I'm I mean, gonna he buy... does give her no privacy, so you would not... Imagine he would know his fucking shoe size. What the fuck? He knows, like, the exact start date and end day for a period, but he doesn't also, know her shoe size. clearly, he's not using his fucking money to buy Louboutins. It's fucking, what, $1,300? There's no way he's using his fucking money. He had no money. He's using her fucking money. He went to the store and bought her shoes that don't fit her. That's what he did. He picked up shoes that don't fucking fit her. I love how you're speaking with so much rigor. <laughs> okay. People are saying that they want to see a sex scene between Maine and Mercedes. Who? Who's Maine? The really big dude that tried to make a move on Mercedes oh. and she was like, nah, man. Nah, I don't like that. That's kind of... He's like... She's clearly like dealing with shit. He invited her to this thing and she went and he flirts with her and she flirts with him. But then when she went to the party, he's like like i get it she like showed up to party so he's like oh yeah fuck yeah she showed up oh man all this flirting get my game on but then like she clearly talks about heavy shit and then he like tries to make a move i'm like that's that's kind of cringe bro you gotta read man you gotta read her she's clearly he literally got out of jail that morning so he may have been rusty fair fair but also i'm just like what 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 did what did she talk about i know she talked about something very serious but it was, it was i honestly had no idea what she was talking about i knew she had a lot on her on her mind but i didn't know what she was referencing yeah i can't remember oh but the crazy the crazy shit talking about what's his name Maine. fuck 
I had no idea there's some gang wars going on. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh, my God. I didn't know he was on Pico's side. Fuck. I didn't know that either. And he I was just like, got out of jail. And, and I was like, back to gangbanging. I was like, oh, fuck. Shit's going to go down. Whatever happened to the fat kid? Because he still has that ankle bracelet. So he just grabbed his gun and was like, we're going to kill whoever killed Pico. And it's like, wait, wait, wait. What about the fat kid <laughs> who's supposed to babysit your ankle thing? He's probably chilling at the store. I feel like we should say some overall things. Like, how do you think season two is going to end? Because people are predicting that Derek is going to die. Uh, I don't think Derek's going to die. I think Uncle Clifford's going to die. No, wait. Ernestine? No, I don't think Uncle Clifford's going to die. I think... Grandmother? God, who do I think is going to die? You don't think Ernestine? No, I don't think she's going to die. They they milking that shit too long if, if she's actually going to die. And they have absolutely no problem killing people off, so I don't think Grandma Ernestine's going to die. Who do I think is going to die? Oh, you know who I think might die? Patrice? Who's a, who's a, who's a, the don't touch my, my rocks girl or don't fuck up my... You think Whisper is going to die? Yeah. I don't, why? I don't know why. I think she's going to get caught in the crossfire at the paint because uh, Lil Murder's going to be there. And she's going to be like, oh, man, I got to create my force field to block bullets. I feel like she's going to die. You're saying that with such a huge smile on your face. I just like her. She, she's like, dude, I love her. She's like my favorite character on that fucking show. She's so fucking, I don't know, so out there. I love it. I feel like that is a good place to end. Thank you for talking about this with me. Okay, I love you. My very sexy uh, Poggerino girlfriend. I'm going to save that. Is that is that going to be my ringtone? Poggerino girlfriend. I love you. I love you too. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to my lover for agreeing to discuss P-Valley with yours truly. And thank you for supporting this podcast. Pro Cut Hustle is a passion project for me. In addition, July was my most lucrative month on Patreon ever. And I've been using Patreon since 2019. Thank you so much to everyone who helped me make my most lucrative month on Patreon. That happened while I almost got my account removed permanently. Your patronage is not only supporting me, but the current and aspiring pro cuddlers who listen to Pro Cuddle Hustle. Patreon says I am not allowed to offer Skype calls or advertise meetups, so fuck Patreon for doing that. I am still accepting cuddle bookings. Screening and deposits are mandatory. Vaccination and negative COVID tests are required. Longer bookings will be prioritized. I accept deposits through Venmo Cash App and Patreon. I am not going to be able to cuddle anyone the weekend of August 6 through 7 because I am going on a girls trip with my mom. Most of California, the state where I live in the US, is on fire right now. So the next time you hear my voice, I will probably have stories of my very first ever vacation with my mom and just my mom. Oh yeah, I also am going to attend my very first music festival this August. So I am not available for bookings from August 19 to August 22. That's Friday through Monday. I'm staying in Pasadena, so if you have any food recommendations or tourist attraction recommendations for that region, please send them my way. If you haven't already, please leave a positive review on Spotify, YouTube, Listen Notes, Castbox, Podchaser, Podcast Addict. Perhaps I'll read your review in a future episode. Please follow Pro Cut Hustle on all socials, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. My TikTok recently got banned. It's my second ever TikTok account to get banned. I can never seem to have an account for longer than a year. Tell everyone on your socials how important this professional cuddling podcast is. I also manage two different Facebook groups, Ask a Professional Cuddler and Professional Cuddlers and SW Only. Please join the latter only if you are a professional cuddler or a sex worker. Please send caviar gift cards and Airbnb gift cards. My email address is felicityazra at gmail.com. I am still in the process of uploading every single episode of this podcast to XBiz TV. Thank you so much for your patience. Catch y'all later. You have been listening to episode 20.5 of Felicity Azura's podcast.